this video I'm gonna show you how you can uh, create a edge bundling from a straight line network network lines uh, using one of the techniques shown in a paper so uh, edge bundling itself is th things like this you have this kind of straight network and from this network you can bundle uh, several uh, straight lines together to make a smooth line like this so and being used for visualization for the graph the network S and I am going to refer to a paper uh, by Danny Holton and Jack Van Welch um, named titled uh, force directed edge bundling for graph visualization I'm, I'm gonna follow this uh, method uh, to create the edge bundling in Houdini so let's do that okay first of all let me explain uh, the al main algorithm of the edge bundling using force directed graph um, explained in the paper so let's say you have two lines which you want to bundle together like this um, what you should do first is to resample the lines in, and create several points on top of the line for each line and then next um, you will make a spring forces in between those two lines connecting um, each points you have just resampled so like this this red line will become a spring force to pull each uh, pull these two lines together like like this and in order to make it as a um, efficient or um, pro proper proper uh, spring joint spring force you sh you should also have another uh, force for each point which goes which moves to the side of the point uh, which is on the line like this so uh, in a close-up it looks like this you have this line and you have this point and one of the force that <coughs> is applied on this point is a spring force and another force you will have is, is the force that just try to um, try to uh, keep this line as a straight line which is another force which goes on a side so co combining those two uh, three forces as a result uh, in a total vigil you'll see something like this kind of shape and that's the main algorithm in order to create the edge bundling and if you have a multiple lines like this the only difference with the 2.2 lines is that you should have a pair for each lines in the list you should make a pair for let's say this is one two three you should make a pair in between if it's if you're looking at uh, edge one then you the edge one should make a pair with the edge two and three so something like this 
And as for edge 2, it should make a pair with the edge 1 and edge 3. So like this. And for edge 3, make a pair with the edge 2 and edge 1. And right now it, ha it already has. So, so <clears throat> by making a spring for each pairs, you could uh, calculate a edge bundling. You could visualize edge bundling. Uh, for multiple lines uh, but the problem uh, there is one problem with this um, method is that uh, if you connect all the lines exist in the graph uh, like this then more and more lines you have uh, more calculations and more complex the spring network will be and more more calculation um, cost will need it so and also if you combine old uh, if you use all lines to make a pair um, what you see as a result as a edge bundling connection edge bundling Edge bundle is looking like this. Let me drill. <clears throat> so let's say if you have like four lines, it will become something like like this. And even if you add like several lines to this uh, network it will be something like this so there will always be a center point somewhere around the center of the graph and the edge will always be um, cohe cohere or um, pulled to the center point of this network and that's that's kind of a problem um, because what you want as a result and it doesn't really look like the one that the line uh, connects uh, to only to the center point but having a lot of bundling in each area is like these dependent on the position and the angles and scales and so on so in order to achieve that you need to have another um, algorithm in order to limit the type of pairs it, uh, each edge should have and that is called um, that is how uh, you have to calculate the compatibility for each edges uh, so let's say if you have multiple lines like this something like this <clears throat> you need to uh, if you look at the one of the edge and if you want to connect uh, if you want to make a pair with this edge with another edge you have to be able to you have to choose which edges to be to make a spring with <clears throat> and there's a four types of um, compatibility value which uh, evaluates each lines with the the line that you are looking at to to see if the targeted edge is compatible as a pair or not so either let's say either two or three or one four or five or six is compatible with edge one or not and there's four types of compatibility first um, let's look at the the paper and 
it is so here is where you where it explains how you can calculate a compatibility and there's four, four types and one type is this one the that is shown in image A which is a angle compatibility so what it means is that <clears throat> if the edges of the angle if the angle is too high then it should not make a pair or if the angle is less than um, or if it if the angle or I, or should I say the parallelness between those two lines uh, <coughs> better um, what should I say I mean uh, if the two lines are close to the parallel maybe it should be it should count it as a pair but if the angle between the lines is too high like more than 45 degrees or something then it should not make it as a pair so let this could be counted as a pair this might not be counted as a pair so that's one way to calculate the compatibility <coughs> uh, to see the angle between the two lines and in order to check the angle you could use the dot product for uh, each lines by uh, looking uh, by converting each lines as a vector and it could be easily done in Houdini okay the second compatibility you should consider is it's a scale compatibility so sometimes you have uh, lines that have different scales like this but in order to create a spring you have to resample with the same number of points so if you have one two three four five six seven then you should have seven points for each uh, lines no matter what the scale of the line is uh, but as you can see if the scale is too different between two lines then you sometimes have you might have a problem when it could when it pulls together I mean the big one might be okay like this but the small one could deform like this when it uh, pull together the line and this uh, deformation might not look um, natural as a uh, edge bundle bun bundles so that's where it come with uh, where you need to uh, check the scale compatibility its scale value between this line and this line <coughs> So if the difference is too big, then it should make it, it should avoid making as a pair. If the line scale is pretty much close, I mean the line size is pretty much close, then it could make it as a pair. So that's how uh, scale compatibility be used. Okay, another compatibility value is the position um, compatibility so let's say you have several lines 
and you can you probably wanna connect the lines that's close together but if the lines are too far away like this line and this line you might not want to make it as a pair you might not want to make a spring in between this line and this line because it's too far so that's where it comes the position compatibility value you calculate the distance between each uh, possible pair and then like check the distance between the center point of the first line and the center point of the second line and if the distance is um, too far away then should make should not make a pair but if the <coughs> distance is uh, pretty close to each other then it should make a pair so that's another compatibility. Now the final compatibility is the visible compatibility. <clears throat> Sometimes um, the lines are aligned and the scales are pretty close and the position is close but there's also there could be a problem like this. Uh, sometimes the position of each line is a bit skewed like this making a skewed uh, spring and that could be a problematic at some point <clears throat> making a clean um, connection because if you see will create something like this and you might also want to avoid this kind of um, situations so that's where it comes uh, the visibility <coughs> com visibility compatibility value uh, what you do is to check the intersection between intersection of uh, the, the first point and the end point of the line with the extended line of the target line and then check if those intersected lines are too far from the center of the main uh, um, main line <clears throat> if the uh, if the distance is too far then it's pretty much skewed so you should avoid this making as a pair So that's how it works. I mean, it that's how it works um, to make a edge bundling using force directed um, graph. <coughs> Explain in this paper. So I'm gonna show you how you can implement this in Houdini. Um, it's pretty simple than you think you just need to uh, implement what it says in the paper so <clears throat> it shouldn't take that long I think let's uh, first make a random line network I'm just gonna make a simple line network um, first let's make a geometry Let's make a circle and make a polygon so that and extract a point from it. Delete the primitive. Let's 
let's make the viewport to a dock. Okay. And let's make a null node and name it as a controller to collect all the parameters. First parameter of what I, uh, I want to register is the number of divisions of this uh, circle. So I'm going to name this division. And range it from like from 10 to 1000. Okay, I'm gonna randomly set the number for the divisions. Paste it here. Okay, maybe it's too much for initial trial. I'm gonna set it to 100. Okay, and now <clears throat> I like to translate this. Uh, upward to the y direction maybe a side maybe i could would like to set the size of the circle as well so i'm gonna set make a size parameter here and set the range from 0 to 50 Apply. Let's set the size to 20. Copy parameter and paste it to the uniform scale to use it as a radius. Okay, now um, for the transform, let's transform to the y direction using the same value size and multiply it by 2 so that it moves upward uh, as a <coughs> for value of diameter okay maybe I could move up a little bit more maybe I could multiply it by 3 Uh, to see the effects a little bit better. Okay. Now, <coughs> like to connect a and uh, what like to make a line between those points on the bottom uh, on the floor and the points on the ceiling but I want to connect it uh, at the random position I mean I want to pick random points from each circle and then connect the line so I just don't want to make a straight line going upward so what I'm gonna do is to make a sort node for the upward circle then sort the point to random then I could make a line connection between the bottom circle and the top circle so I'm gonna just use the point triangle and connect uh, the bottom and top together and make a line network let's like uh, let's make a line network let's get the the top position of the point uh, with the same index number of the point on the bottom and it's at that point 
and let's make a line okay so this will be the initial condition of the network which is just a straight line and from this uh, straight line network I would like to make a edge bundling, the smooth edge bundling network something looking like uh, this uh, although this uh, paper is specifically written for the 2D network um, since this could be re replaced with the vector uh, it could also apply for 3D di three dimensional <coughs> vector fee uh, vector uh, network so it doesn't really matter since Houdini needs a 3D software let's just do it in 3D okay now next thing is right now it's just a straight line which have only first and end points so let's resample this and you have to set the number of points all the same for each lines as I explained before so turn off the maximum segment lengths and turn on the maximum segments and let's make a parameter for the number of segments let's say segments and let's say 20 okay let's take, set the range from 0 to 100 let's set 20 as initial value I might want to change it later on okay <coughs> now uh, from here I'm gonna start calculate the, uh, ca calculate the compatibility for each uh, lines for each primitives so now what I'm gonna do is to check each primitive and uh, find a compatible pair for each uh, lines for each primitives so let's use primitive wrangle uh, to calculate the compatibility for each lines okay now this will be a bit long to, to write up since you have four types of <coughs> um, compatibility values now uh, first of all maybe I could just split it into four wrangle but I'm just gonna combine it into one to make it <coughs> uh, easy to manage or easy to see okay so first of all let's get the primitive list uh, no I mean the points on a primitive the base primitive Let's say if you're looking at this primitive, it's getting the points on this uh, each primitive. I have like resampled to 20, so it, it could have like 21 points for each uh, lines, I think. now <clears throat> let's get the first line uh, the first index of point which could the first point could be 
I mean, any points that's on the bottom part will be the first point of the primitive. So PT capital S will be a points on the bottom, which is the first point of the line. And let's also get the end point of the primitive. And that will be a last point on the PTS, which is the number, uh, the point list of the primitive for each primitive, which will be the points on top part. Okay, now let's get the position for the first point and the end point. I'm going to name the first point to pos s. And the uh, end position okay, like this. And also, let's uh, calculate um, the middle position of the point. So, the middle position of the line, which is a which can be calculated with the first point and the second point and divide it by 2. Or multiply by 0.5. Okay, and let's also calculate the distance between the first point and the end point which I can use the distance function like this. Okay. <coughs> um, now, let's make a empty uh, list to store all the compatible pair for the for each primitive named as prims let's make it as an empty list and now let's look let's go through all the primitive from the zero network the zero input so n primitives And when you look for all the primitive, you want to you want to avoid looking at yourself. I mean, since you're on, you're you're running over the primitives for this wrangle. So if you are looking currently looking at this primitive, then when you go through all the primitives with the full loop, you want to avoid looking. Uh, at this primitive because you don't want to self uh, reference to to make a pair in I mean using same lines as a pair is doesn't really mean anything so you sh sh should avoid it in order to avoid it make a condition if the primnum is not equal to I then calculate so <clears throat> um, so for each uh, other primitive let's also get the point list um, let's name this NPTS which is similar to the, these And the first point of the other primitive and the end point of the other primitive. And the middle point 
of the other primitive. Yeah, I need to get the vector position for the first point and end point. So pause and pause as goes point P and pause S vector and pause E point and pause E <coughs> And vector and pause m equal point. Uh, could do the same thing as the original pause m. Just add and pause s plus and pause i e multiply by point five. Okay, mm, and um. Let's also calculate the distance. I'm gonna name this S N dist. And distance between N pos S and N pos E. Okay, now let's first calculate the angle compatibility. So let's say if you're looking at this lines and check if this lines is compatible as an angle. Um, for each compatibility values, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to uh, get the value which is in between zero and one. If the one, if the value is one, then uh, as for the angle, it's parallel. If the value is zero, then it's perpendicular, so it's totally not perpen uh, to totally not mm, parallel. Uh, so the way to calculate angle like that uh, as as value in between zero and one, and the one being parallel and then zero being perpendicular, it, you can just use a dot product. For each uh, line uh, uh, treated as a vector, a straight vector. So I could say angle val equals to absolute of dot product of normalized vector of pos e minus pos s and normalized vector of n pos e minus n pos s so if the value is zero then it's per totally perpendicular if the value is one then it's um, parallel. Now this is the angle compatibility. Let's go to the scale compatibility. Okay. Okay. First of all, in order to calculate the scale compatibility, I'm gonna get the average uh, lengths uh, between the the source primitive, if you're looking at this one, that will be the source primitive, and the target primitive, if you're looking for the pair primitive, the other primitive lines like this one will be the target, targeted one. So <clears throat> let's check the, uh, let's first calculate the average uh, lengths. which will be calculated as distance plus the other distance, the pair distance. I named it, uh, let, let me name this dist. So dist plus end dist multiply by 0 0.5 
which gives me the average distance between the source lines and the targeted line and then calculate the scale compatibility value by Two point zero divided by the average distance um, divided by the minimum distance and any distance. So <coughs> this will get uh, let get the shorter length shoulder distance of the line whether it's on the source uh, whether it's source or the whether it's targeted and divide it <coughs> use that to divide with the <coughs> average distance and add it with the max <coughs> distance um and and this and this one divided by the average distance. So for this one, the larger one pick the larger distance. So if the min distance is uh, smaller than n dist, this one will pick distance uh, dist, and this one will pick n dist, and divided by l average. <coughs> and so on. Now if the if there are um sorry <coughs> um what this gives you that is that if the distance and end distance is the same value it will give you the value one um if the distance and end this is so far away um like if it's if the distance is one and n distance is ten then it will give you a lower value than one something like point one or so so less point uh, uh less value you have for the scale value uh there's a big difference mm -hmm. between uh, a big di scale difference between those two lines. So that's the scale compatibility. Now, <clears throat> next one, position compatibility. And um, for the scale compatibility, uh, what you want to calculate is the distance between two lines compared to the average distance. Now, uh, you can calculate it. Calculate it by use the same average lengths between two lines and divide it by the average length plus distance between the position M and N position M. Oops. Uh, need, seems I have an error here. Let me check. Let me pause this a little bit. Okay, I made a mistake here. Um, it should not be n pos s, but it should be n pts, since this is an index, and this will be n pte. Okay. Now for the position compatibility, it is calculated as this uh, average distance divided by average distance plus distance of uh, each. Um, the center point, the middle point for each line. Now, <clears throat> the 
if the distance between two lines is too far, which makes this value really big, it will be uh, it will make these total value close to zero. But if the distance between two lines is close to zero, then the total value, the this calculation will be close to one. So one means close um, lines, zero means too far lines. So higher the value, more compatible should be. Now last, uh, last of all, it, this will be a busy compatibility, which is a bit um, longer, it takes longer to calculate it. Uh, first off, let's look at the, the paper, how it's calculating it. So you have these two lines. The P means the source line and the Q means the target line. And for each uh, P and Q, for this one, it's projecting the first and the end point of the targeted line to a source line. Name it as I0 and I1. And from I0 and I1 getting an IM. <coughs> and by applying uh, this kind of calculations, it's checking whether the line <coughs> is visible from other targeted line or source lines. If the target line is visible from the source lines, if the value, <coughs> if the value, uh, this total value, the calculation calculated value is close to one, then it's pretty much visible. Uh, the target line is pretty much visible to the source lines, but if the uh, if the the calculated value be close to zero, then it's out of sight from source line to a target line. So this target line could be placed something far away from here. So that's not compatible in order to make a spring, which could make a skewed um, spring network. So let's implement this calculations in Houdini. First of all, uh, you need to calculate the projected position for the first and end line of the targeted lines to a source lines and vice versa. Now <coughs> let's go back. And in order to get the to uh, projected um, position, I'm gonna make a function on top of this Bex coding. On top of the coding, I'm gonna name a. F I'm gonna make a function which could be reused to get the um, projected point and. I'm gonna name this get closest uh, point and parameter, uh, use the parameter vector A as a starting point or end point and vector B other end of end point and vector P the point to project onto a line. So A and B represent the line to be projected and P is the point which you want to project. So first make a A to P vector. 
And next you make a a two b vector. And float make a value a to b using the square of the lengths of a to b and then uh, create a dot product to calculate a dot product between a to p and a to b and finally uh, get the parameter of the line a projected line where the point should come using the dot product divided by ATB2 and the final um, position of the projected point or I should say closest point equals to zero uh, I mean a times you know a plus a to b times t and return it A should be A to B. Now I just made a function. Let's use that to calculate the visibility compatibility. Okay, now <clears throat> first thing I want to have an intersected point for the point S. Uh, I want to um, project the, the, st the starting point, which is on the bottom. Of. I want to project the starting point of the source primitive to a target primitive. So I could use a get closest point that I'm gonna set the line the target line um, starting point and target line endpoint and project the starting point the source um, starting point and do the same for the end point and get the middle point for the intersected or projected point like this and do the same things for the f when you look from the target uh, line to a source line so I'm gonna name this end pause s get closest point um, pos s pos e and n pos s I'm just doing the um, the reverse version of these calculations looking for uh, <clears throat> from target to source Pos S, Pos E, and M, Pos, oops, and Pos E. Okay, and let's also get the M Pos M middle point by M Pos at like this. <clears throat> Now, <clears throat> let's go back to the paper and first thing I would like to do by having those values 
I have just calculated the I am I zero I I I, and what I would like to do is to in order to get this compatibility value, I need to first calculate the V PQ and VQP. P is the source line and Q is the target line, and this is the function for the V. So let's calculate this for each PQ and QP. Let's go back. Uh, I'm gonna name the uh, first PQ to be V1 and that will be max 1.0 minus 2 multiply by distance of pos m and m pos m and divided by distance n pos s m pos e and get the maximum between the result calculation for these and zero so the value should not go under zero and I seem to have an error somewhere let's see okay seems to be okay if I refreshed okay now uh, another one for from looking for the QP target to source pretty much the same distance I pos M and I pos uh, wait a minute let me check again okay uh, that should be n pos m, which is the middle point of the target, and i pos m, which is a projected middle point, I think. Yeah. should be it that should be it okay so and divided by distance i pos s and i pos e oops Okay, now I have two values, VPQ and VQP. Final value, the final visibility value will be a minimum of these two values. Okay. This is not a vector, this should be float value. Mistake. Right, then finally, let's combine all those for compatibility. Now, there's full way to uh, deal with these four compatibilities. One is to uh, create a separate conditions for each compatibility like if the position compatibility is something something and so on for each four different compatibility values but the simplest way is to multiply those four values together And 
can use one um, threshold parameter to control what is the best uh, threshold for the these compatibility how um, since all the values are in between 0 to 1 you could also set the threshold uh, limitation from 0 to 1 and if the if the value is more than the threshold if then you can say that the targeted line is compatible as a pair so append plims to append prims the index of the target primitive index in this case i okay should be angle value i guess all right and since I'm using a parameter called threshold, let's click the button here to promote the parameter threshold. And I also want to connect with the main controller to uh, control the threshold here. So I'm going to name this compatibility thresh. Compatibility thresh. Ooh. Okay, and the range is from zero to one. And oops, let's set the threshold compatibility threshold to something like point seven or something and then copy the parameter and paste it here right uh, let's name this create lines and let's name this calc compatibility Now, <clears throat> now I uh, I have this primitives appended uh, primitive index appended, uh, which is compatible as a pair for each primitive. Let's uh, applied this. Let's add this uh, list to a attribute. For each primitive, I'm gonna set it to a attribute called prims, which is straightforward. And let's see if there's a primitive list applied for each primitive. And here you go. So each primitive, you have a list of indexes for the compatible list of. Uh, target lines and if I change the value here compatible threshold if you if I make it pretty small like close to zero then you have more chance to connect with every lines available inside a network inside a space but if I change the threshold close to one like uh, 0.96 or something then you have less chance to connect with other lines so you have like right now I have like maximum of one line as a target and if I set it to one then you'll have no chance to find a uh, compatible target line because one is well you have I mean it's a, it's a bit weird because it it's looking at the same uh, index which uh, which should not be uh, done okay let me check the 
uh, conditions. <clears throat> but basically, uh, you have no, you don't have any chance to have a target. <clears throat> Um, compatible target if the threshold is one because one is the the best choice. It has to uh, it has to be the same exact line in order to be the best match. But <clears throat> right now it it does have a target line and use having the same number same primitive index which is a bit weird and what is this prim no okay I think I'm setting it something wrong I think I'm s using prim no oh yeah here spell mistake so prim num equal is not equal to i then i should yeah i should have zero target uh indexes now if i change to something like 0.83 yeah it has a decent amount of target lines okay Let's keep it to 7.75 or something and uh, go on. Let's go on. I, f oops. Okay, I'm gonna set, make another primitive wrangle here. And I'm gonna use it to set the P <coughs> P scale for each point on the for each primitive um, for final visualization. So P, I'm gonna name it P scale. Okay. <coughs> uh, same as the compatibility uh, wrangle, I'm gonna get the list of points for each primitive using prim points okay and make a full loop for each point get the point index for each point and Let's make an a angle value to use it for a sign uh, function. So fit the index number, which the maximum number is length of PTS points minus one and set it to set the <coughs> um, fit um, value to the target value to be in between 0 to pi which is 180 degrees and then <coughs> make a p scale value using another fit to fit the sine of the angle which is between 0 to 1 to let's make a parameter here a max scale and min scale right then set point attriv to P scale, PTP scale, right. Oops. Okay. Gotta set the primitive index here. Prim num. Num. 
Okay. Let's see. For each point I have okay zero because I have to promote the parameters here and let's also give a parameter for the main controller. Um naming max p scale and minimum p scale right and for each let's set it the value in between 0 to 1 and 0 to 1 or um, I could say 0 to 10 and 0 to 10 probably okay apply and as an initial value I'm just gonna set the maximum value to like something like 0.3 and the minimum 0.1 okay okay and copy this parameter and paste it here also paste it here then rename the max to minimum minimum okay okay let's check the p scale again okay now i have the p scale in between 0.3 to 0.1 yep and it should also be uh, have a sign curved um, uh, interpolated value all right uh, so that's <coughs> the preparation uh, I have just prepared the compatible uh, list for each um, primitive which uh, target lines should be connected to each other should be paired together now <clears throat> there's one more thing I ha I would like to uh, set as a preparation I'm gonna make a another attribute wrangle and for this one I'm gonna set it to run over to detail and I'm gonna set S uh, stands for uh, scale and F scale rate and make it as a parameter. Now the S is a multiplication value how far the spring uh, how strong the spring is so um, and the s rate is um, for each iterations how this uh, strength of spring get weaker or stronger I mean basically I would in order to stop the springs at some point I want to make I, I, I don't want to keep pushing a uh, keep pulling the lines together with the spring I want to some I want to I would like to um, stop the forces at some point over the iterations so the S rate will be used to multiply the strengths with in, in order for each step to make as small as possible when the iterations get uh, higher or deeper. So the S rate is in between 0 and 1. S could be any number but I'm also gonna set it in between 0 to 1 and for both parameters I want to set it to the main controller as well so let's name this um spring scale spring strengths 
ring strings from zero to one and another float spring strings ratio spring strings ratio which is also from zero to one apply and for string in string ratio if i keep this to one then and if the spring strength is like 0.1 and then then for each iteration the, the strength of the spring will be kept as 0.1 but if i set the spring strength ratio to 0.9 then for each iterations the strengths spring strengths will be multiplied by this ratio so for the next iterations this number will be 0 0.09 and so on so eventually uh, after several iterations it will be close to zero so the spring forces will not be affect the shape of the bundling now I'll just keep it to one in order to see the uh, the gradual difference and I will keep the strengths to a bit higher than 0.1 for experimentation maybe I, sh I might need to tweak these values later on let's see and I'm gonna name this to spring strings now the preparation is done for the um, uh, the edge bundling now what I need to do is to create a solver to actually pull the uh, paired line together with a specified strength spring strength so now let's do that Okay, let's make a primitive primitive wrangle and run over each primitive. And as I said it before, um, for each primitive, I have this prims attributes so let's get that first um, so <clears throat> int prims equals to prims now <clears throat> Uh, I also want to have a parameter called parameter called K, which is also uh, explained in a paper. Let's look at the paper. Somewhere around here. Yeah, so this is the K. A global spring constant k is used to control the amount of edge bundling in a graph by determining the stiffness of the edge. So the higher the k is, more stiff the edge is, so more hard to pull. So I'm gonna promote this k and also would like to um, connect with the main controllers so let's go back to the main controller and name this stiffness and this will be a value between 0 to 1 as well and let's set the value to point 0.1 and copy this parameter again 
go back to the solver and paste it here to the K. All right, and also let's get a value S, which is a spring strings from a detail. I should have a S, okay, it's zero, something's wrong. Okay, yeah, that is because I didn't set it here. Right, need to copy the strengths lengths, uh, spring strengths, and paste it to here. Right, then also copy the spring, uh, spring strengths ratio to here. Okay, which will uh, insert the attributes to the detail like this. All right. Let's go back to the solver and now I have two values S and K. And let's also get the point list for each primitive so which I have been doing a lot okay and also get the first point and the end point PTS uh, which I might not need it it's which I might not need it, I guess. Hmm. Let's see. Um, let's loop through all the points and the primitive to first uh, create a uh, spring force for each uh, primitive in order to preserve the shape of its line, even if it's being pulled uh, with the target <coughs> uh, spring. Um, the point of this graph uh, bundling is to keep the end point and the starting point being fixed to the current position so you should avoid looping from zero but it should loop from one which is the second point of the primitive and then and the loop should be ended number of point minus one so it should avoid looping to a end point now pt equals to pts n PTA, which will be the points that's uh, that will be the previous point of previous point. Uh, if this is the current point PT, then the PTA will be the previous point. So I'm gonna uh, subtract N with one, and then PTB will be after point which I will add one to an N to have a after point. Now, <clears throat> uh, let's calculate, let's get the forces. Let's give, uh, let's create a forces. Now, <clears throat> the first force is to let the point here to to go to which uh, tries to be pulled to a PTA to keep the shape of the line, the original line. So <clears throat> I'm gonna name this F1 force one and pos A minus pos 
and multiply it by k divided by distance, multiply by length of PTS, which this formula is explained in the paper right here. This one. I mean, this one, a PI minus one minus PI, this is, this means the point that's uh, before the current point, this is the current point, and then multiply with KP. And KP is explained above here, KP equals to K divided by uh, the, the initial length of HP multiplied by number of segments. The explanation here is a bit it's not well written, I have to say, but the, that's the equations. So <clears throat> this is the vector from point the original point to point A, which, which is the previous point, and multiply by k and divided by the length of original length of the p, which I don't have it right now, so I have to calculate it here. Okay, so original distance will be could be calculated as a distance between the first point and the end point. So <clears throat> Uh, the, what I could do is to first get the first point, PTS, which is the first point in PTS list, and PTE, which is the end point, and the POS S the position of the starting point <coughs> which I have been doing a lot in this uh, recipe and point and point zero PTE right okay and the distance will be a distance between pos s and pos e right and okay i'm missing pos a and pos because i haven't get the position yet so i have also have to get the position which is from a p t and pos a will be from PTA, POS B will be from PTB, right? Okay, <clears throat> now that's a F1, force one, and you could do the same, you should do the same for F2, which is for the after point uh, for POS B. Simply uh, pos b minus pos multiply by k divided by distance multiply by length of ptn pretty much the same and having those two forces will keep this line uh, trying to keep this line as a straight line um, but then that's not um, enough for the forces to pull each uh, lines together obviously in order to create an edge bundle the most important forces a uh, force now uh, will be the spring force which connects uh, those lines together um, what I'm gonna name this as a f3 and I'm gonna set an initial value to be 0 0 0 <clears throat> now for each primitive, each possible compatible pairs, compatible target primitive, I'm gonna have to make a spring. 
So gonna look through all the prims, which is a compatible list of primitive. Um, get the list of points for each um, target primitive. this and then and pt to be and pts and vector and pause to be point right and i'm gonna make a temporal uh, force which could be calculated as now in this case this one for each edges for each target edge um, multiply the vector with a length of distance of p p i and then p uh, q i. So <clears throat> that that is um, n pass minus position multiply by one divided by a distance. Uh, pause and end pause. Okay. And um, that's. Sh and then finally add this temporal force to an F3. So for F3, when it exit the loop it will have the final uh, combined forces now i would like I, I would also like to make a another condition here because i mean this itself is pretty much okay but there is a big chance that um line just stick to another line like with a zero distance which I mean, some cases it might be okay, but some cases it might make the lines um, do thing as a visible. So I would like to have, I would like to left some threshold in between the bundled line. So I'm gonna give a little condition here. Length, if the length of TF, which is the magnitude of the force, is uh, smaller than distance of position and impasse, then add the force, which means if the force is bigger than the distance of position the 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 original position of the point uh, original source lines point position and the target lines point position with if this one is bigger than the um, it will just go to the other side of the line i mean the spring will with this which this means that spring is too spring force is too big and that might not be okay i mean that might make a jiggle or something <clears throat> so in order to avoid it i made a condition here but you you could always like cancel it, com command it out to make more uh, thing bundles. But for now, I'm gonna go with this. Maybe later on, I'm gonna check with with this or without this. 
how the visible will be changed. Now, finally, combine all forces F, uh, F1, F2, and F3, and then multiply by the spring strength S, and set point attrib uh, force PT or I don't think I need to set the point attribute for the forces. I just need to update the point position of the point for each point on the source uh, lines to pull. So set point attrib um, PT position plus F. Okay, this should be TF. All right. Now I'm gonna name this apply force and since for each uh, iterations, I want to also update the scale with the scale ratio, the spring strength ratio. So I'm gonna make a attribute uh, wrangle. Uh, let's name it and let's have it detailed and multiply as by S rate. Right now the S rate is 1.0 so it doesn't make any effect but if I change this spring ratio to something like 0 0.95 let's go back to here then the S become a bit less by multiplying S rate to an S. I'm gonna set update S. And then finally, uh, since it doesn't look smooth and for each iteration it's better to have a smooth curve to calculate the springs and so on. So I'm going to uh, connect a smooth uh, node here and set it to uh, just use it as a normal um, parameters. Let's go back and see what the effect will be by running it, running the solver. Let's see. If I play it and you can already see that the edge is bundling together like this. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Now let's um, try to change some parameters to see the differences. Right now I have like the compatibility threshold to 0.75 but let's say if I change to 0.253 then it's already being connect uh, pulling too too strong so let's uh, let's set the spring strength a bit smaller like this like 0 0.004 or something then run it now it's a bit too strong, I guess. Maybe 0 0.02 and do again. But still, it's connecting to a one line because almost all the lines has been considered as compatible lines as a target. So which makes all the lines being connected together to make a one single line. So it's always better 
in if you want to have a natural looking um, edge bundling you want to make the compatibility threshold at least bigger than 0.6 or something let's see and now it's starting to get better but uh, let's increase the strengths maybe it's also a bit too strong I could also always uh, stop the string strengths a bit faster by lowering the ratios, the string ratio, like this. So it's a matter of um, parameters. Have to find the best parameters in order to have a best looking um, <coughs> uh, bundling. Now, if you want to keep pulling it, then you should set the spring strength ratio to 1, then it just never stops. The spring never stops. In that case, I want to have the compatibility threshold a bit bigger, like 8.85 or something. Then run it. And it does give me a interesting result like this it is keep pulling but it somehow it somehow stops at some point like this having uh, interesting uh, bundling uh, based on the compatibility values now <clears throat> um, as I mentioned before inside this apply force function I did have this condition here. If I cancel this, let's see what's gonna happen. Remember what it looks like here and if I go up and redo it and run the solver, um, can you see that the lines has been connected pretty close together like as a single line? Not really a single line but pretty close together so because there's no like uh, limitation how close it should go it could go so that's the difference if you want to keep the lines a bit farther away then you want to have the condition that I have set but if you want to have the line bundled uh, as much as close as possible then you don't really need to have a condition uh, for my preference I do want to have some spaces between edges so I'm gonna keep this condition but it's up to you if you want to have it or not like this now as a final touch I'm gonna make it as um 3D geometry, I mean polygon, so that you could send it for rendering or anything for maybe a fabrication like 3D printing. <clears throat> now let's do that. Um, since I already have a P scale for each point, I should. Yeah, let's use that P scale to. Uh, use it for the polywire. Polywire's radius or scale. So the wire radius is right now fixed to 0.1, but I could use a um, expression to use <coughs> the p scale value for each point. Uh, so point. Uh, look at the self by using op input and pt and p scale and zero now <clears throat> I have maximum of like point what was it point three guess and minimum scale point one which is on the middle of the connection of the network 
If I increase the max P scaled point I don't know, 7 and mean P scaled to 0.25 and run this over again. It's going to produce something like this. More um, sticky like glue like network which I really like yeah and it's up to you with the resolution of the poly wires if you want to make it rounded you could just do it and maybe for final retouch maybe you want to convert it into a single polygon by first convert it into VDV using VDV from polygon and use VDV smooth to smooth out the VDVs maybe a bit more oops a bit too strong and convert VDV to make it as a single polygon so that you could send it for 3d printing or something Very interesting yeah that's it that's pretty it for the <coughs> uh, edge bundling um, the initial purpose of this algorithm as shown in a paper is to use it for graph visualization like like presentation of the maps or 2d based uh, network but as you can see it could also be used in three-dimensional spaces so could also be also be used for like structures or geometrical forms and stuff like that <clears throat> have uh, tons of possibility how it could be used yeah that's it um thank you for watching and sorry for being so long